Today sparks a new little series that I am going to start. Kind of like those series you see online that helps players learn various mechanics and fundamentals in Counter-Strike. However, instead of me teaching the basics that will primarily help newer players, this is going to be towards people of all levels, from professionals to noobs. This is why I'm calling it a toolkit. Like any sane and reasonable man, you typically have a toolkit. Maybe it won't be a physical toolkit with your hardware to complete basic household repairs, although you really should have one, but I'm talking about your mental toolkits. Whether doing your job, a hobby, something you're good at, or anything in life, you need the mental maturity and skills in order to accomplish what you need to accomplish in life. While I do sound like a spoiled little college brat who's majoring in philosophy, my points are still valid. However, instead of real life shit, <laughs> I'm going to be talking about video games. So, the first part of this series is going to be talking about what an in-game leader is. In case you don't know what an in-game leader is, or IGL, it's an unofficial role many players, including professional teams, assign to someone who will make calls and decisions for the team. What would be best to do, and when to do it. This sounds like a glorified, pretentious, bossy sack of shit, you may say. And, under certain circumstances, this can apply to someone. However, what separates a pseudo-IGL and a genuine one is how they lead and practice what they preach. What do I mean by this? Well, to simply put, not everyone is meant to be an IGL. In society or any other social gathering, some people are meant to be leaders, and some are not. Some are better suited to lead, others are better at being led, others do well performing the heavy lifting, and some will just bitch and complain and throw their shit-filled diaper everywhere. So, do you have what it takes to be an IGL? Let's find out. First off, it is perfectly fine if you're not a leader. Don't fret. Even the most useless retard has some issue. Am I calling you a retard? Of course not. Unless you're that one random who literally gives up if we lost the first pistol round. So, what are some traits or characteristics that show you might be a potential IGL? First things first, are you good at being a people person? Can you interact with your teammates and others in a positive or constructive manner? Whether it be your best friend, randoms, the enemy, or any other person in general, this applies to real life as well. If you cannot win the hearts of your team, you are going to struggle really bad as an IGL. Second, can you keep calm under stressful, high pressure, and anger inducing times? Typically, people who know how to control their temper really well are excellent IGLs. They can handle shit talking from the enemy, and they don't snap at their teammates if something goes wrong, or if your teammates start getting angry at each other, or hell, even yourself. Any normal person could just lose their cool and let the urge to get angry take over them. An IGL does not. Of course, you can get mad, and of course, you can even express that anger. However, if you are a regular hothead who lets minor tilting things get the better of you all the time, being an IGL maybe isn't for you. Also, keeping calm under pressure applies to the game as well. If your team decides to eco push a choke point, do you actively push or do you cower back because someone threw a molotov and you're afraid of dying? Do you know how to play an afterplant or deal with a push as effectively as you can? Can you do the best you can with the knowledge you have? These are all very important traits in a great IGL. While top fragging is a nice bonus and does give your words some more pull, it's not necessarily required. People by instinct are drawn to people who are successful. They idolize and want to be like you to an extent. They want to enjoy the spoils of war and you're killing your enemies and taking their women. However, as I've said, it's not required. People on a subconscious level appreciate someone who's caring, respectful, and smart, and who will help guide them. Knowing when to apologize for a mistake or miscalculation can go a long way. Encouraging a struggling teammate to keep going, congratulating someone when they pull a clutch off, consoling someone who lost the round but tried their damnedest, and being generally nice can go even further than just top fragging. So. After listening to what I have to say on being a good IGL, I leave it to you to decide if you have the chops for it. Even if you don't, don't worry. 
I personally believe it's better not to be a jack of all trades. After all, if someone's a jack of all trades, then usually they're a master of none. If you think you can be a good IGL, however, I hope you make your team proud. However, I want to leave you with a few more miscellaneous tips to help further your IGL capabilities. 1. Rally your men around you. What do I mean by this? Well, this mainly applies to people who you think can, will, or may have a second guess at doing something that the team sees fit. For example, I said people have a really bad tendency to stop a cavalry charge to a bomb site on an eco round. A Molotov can scare you to stop the push. And if you're the first man in line, you can stop a push altogether, and the enemy swamps you with a lightning fast rotate. It's human nature to preserve your well being, and this applies in CSGO, which is a good thing in real life, your desire to, you know, not die. But in CSGO, sometimes you need to take chances and get in the line of fire for a better outcome. So, usually for people who are chicken shit with pushing, a good strat I use before we almost get to where we need to attack. I will typically say something like, keep going, we can't stop now, or we're just trying to get that bomb down, let's go, or we need to help our first guy out, push now, or something of that nature. This has a surprisingly really good rallying effect on your teammates, and a push with five players is better than three. Apes, together, strong. Plus, it also keeps people from not holding back, mainly because if they do, they're going to get yelled at by their team, especially if the team pushed. If you're that one solo guy who everyone else kind of pushed and you just let them die, it'd be kind of embarrassing for you to be just kind of wasting time at that point. So it does kind of have a bit of an effect where they, they want to not die and look embarrassing and the other team hates them. So keep that in mind as well. Two, have fast reaction skills. I'm not talking about flick shots either. I mean... If shit hits the fan, and your plans get fucked, or if the enemy does something unexpected, you need to know how to react to it, and fast. If you're holding B site, and all three of your players on A die in the span of two seconds without trading any of the terrorists, you need to make quick calculations in your head. How many T's are left? What map is it? Do you have any utility? What armaments do you have? Is you surviving good? Do you have any teammates that you can rely on? Is that one guy good at clutching? Do we save for the next round? All these need to be thought up off the top of your head and fast. And this is just one example in CSGO. After all, let's face it, anything can fucking happen in this game and at any time. So what do you do? Well, I'll leave this tip off with a quote you may recognize. Anyone can predict the future, a visionary shapes it. 3. Know how to deal with randoms. Randoms in reality are the reincarnation of AIDS and cancer lumped into one incestuous child. It's a rare exception if they're not, and you need to realize that. However, you still need to accept the fact that they're still on your team for a game. And how can we use them to the best of their abilities? Are they a decent teammate? Are they fucking retarded and can't hit the broadside of a barn? Is their ping so bad you think they're playing on an AM radio signal in Mexico? You need to be opportunistic with how you interact and mold people. Use the shitty teammate as a 30 round eco bank and have him drop your guns. Have your laggy teammate as decoy 2.0. His laggy ass will make it harder for your enemies to hit him and will have so much peekers advantage throughout the game that him distracting the enemies will give you a great opportunity to clean up. Don't call it manipulation though. That sounds rude and really not nice, right? Let's call it social engineering. And we'll leave that from there. Four. Realize that you can let others make calls or plays. Sometimes it's best to let other teammates of yours make a call for a round. Let's say your teammate has a really good spawn to get a mid pick, or your team wants to set up utility to properly attack a bomb site. A good idea is to let your teammate who knows what he's doing in that situation to make calls, or at least help influence yours. When your teammate has set up what he wants to or gets a pick, it's best to let your team follow him for a round. After all, a leader isn't a dictator, he has constituents to give him advice and guidance as well. Be smart and work as a team. However, don't have everyone be an IGL. You need to watch out for everyone wanting to lead at once. After all, an army needs people of all ranks and files to be successful. If every private was a general, then nothing would get done and you will be defeated. So, 
In conclusion, this is the first episode and hopefully a series I start called CSGO Toolkit. I hope this has helped you learn a few new things, whether you're an IGL or not. After all, he who dies with the most toys wins. And the toys here are tools in your CSGO Toolkit.